giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Now we're going to be in our top 10. So uh, these are the top 10 teams you guys voted on. Um, and Brooks and Peter, if you have any comments on these teams, please feel free to hop in. The first team in the top 10 is Team 15173, the Robot Eagles from Milton, Georgia. This team has a solid intake and a pretty accurate shooter to complement it. They're quick at collecting and are able to match the best teams in shooting. They use a pass-through intake, but it seems to work well for them. Right now, they can only do one wall goal in auto and don't attempt the power shots, but those are things that I'd expect them to improve on for future competitions. Any thoughts on this team? Uh, yeah, um, it seems like George's is, is getting good as well. Um, I think that this uh, pass-through design seems to be pretty uh, optimal, especially just uh, getting a simple robot out there that can be improved upon further and uh, iterated upon. Yeah, I, from what I've noticed, like in most matches, even in remote ones, Half the rings end up close to the like goals, and half the rings end up against the back wall. And so I think instead of it being where like you're trying to play two different positions and you pick a robot that can play the other position, or like last year where one robot played feeder and one robot played stacker, this year you have one robot pick from the front side and one robot pick from the back side. That way you can get the rings that are both in the front and back of the field without having turn, to turn around. Or you make a robot that picks up from both. That is true. <laughs> I haven't seen one yet, have you? No, I have not. Not yet, at least. Not yet. Yep. We'll probably see some before Worlds. So, uh, go ahead, uh, Brooks, from the next team. Yeah. And taking ninth is team 10-2-1-9, batteries not included, from Marietta, Georgia. 10 9 is a familiar team from Georgia who always builds high-quality robots and has won their state championship three years in a row. They are very consistent in their scoring for their November 16 remote matches, averaging about 100 points a match. But the robot had a few issues here and there, but with more time and optimizing, I think um, they can do some great things. Yeah, it looks like they were shooting mid-goal for a lot of their shots. Um, and I remember watching some match videos. The shooter seems like it could use a little bit more power. That way they could hit that high-goal shot. And knowing them and how they've done in the past, I think they definitely will be trying to improve that robot and iterate on it. Uh, awesome. Yeah, they're a team that iterates and uh, rebuilds a lot. So I will expect a very good robot, hopefully, uh, by the end of the season. Also yeah, a precarious the TV place there. <laughs> <laughs> Be worried about that. I think that's one of the cool things about this remote stuff. And like, even though COVID has a lot of downsides, we're seeing a lot of early versions of robots that we wouldn't normally see that are outside of our regions, right? Like I normally only see the early versions of robots for teams that are in Maryland or in Virginia, because I see them at competitions and they aren't working perfectly like I see them at Worlds. Um, but now I'm being able to see a lot more of the design process that goes into a lot of these teams. And I think it goes to show yeah, a rookie team may not have the best robot starting off, but you can always iterate, and most teams do. All right, want to go on to the next team? Yes, so uh, in eighth, it's 63-23. Uh, the Brooks team, or the pink team, uh, from Rockledge, Florida. And I was uh, pretty stunned, actually, when I saw their reveal, and their robot in competition is just as stunning. I want to cut right to the chase and just uh, talk about their transfer method, which takes rings from the bottom of their robot up to the shooter, utilizing belts to like flip the rings around. Um, and I think the robot is just like incredibly nicely machined and uh, designed with characteristic pink highlights. And I think the robot is just really great. I don't, I'm sure Brooks has something to <laughs> add here. Vertical spindex roll P. <laughs> Yeah, the, this, uh, the transfer mechanism used from the intake to the shooter reminded me a lot of Vulcans, and I love both of them because you're. this is an, a philosophy that I know, um, who is it from, Brandon from 125 FRC talks about a lot, um, touch it, hold it, and like own the piece that you're touching. So like as soon as it's touching that intake, your robot has complete control over it. And so I, I really love how this entire robot looks. By any chance, do you guys have any relationship to the FRC team, Pink Team? Yes, we do. Um, we are their FTC team. 
Uh, cool. I like to think that that makes us the only NASA FTC team, which is kind of fun <laughs> to think about. So yeah, we are related, Brooks, and we, we might do get to do a role reversal. Though you could say that they are our FRC team instead. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. In seventh place, we have team eight nine zero seven blue box bots from Elgin, Illinois. This team has a solid intake and shooter and does a great job cycling. They were like always cycling. And even though they weren't able to be the most accurate, they were able to pick up rings with ease. Um, and they're going to have to do a little bit of tuning just to get their shooter a little bit more accurate and powerful since most of their shots were going into the mid goal and their auto was a little inconsistent. Overall, they have a solid foundation to build off of for the rest of the season. And I think that's all a team can expect for right now with competitions this early. Um, and especially with all the COVID stuff, all schedules are running behind. Um, so having a robot that is able to shoot the mid goal and is able to pick up as well as there does, I'm, I'm, I would be really happy with that. Yeah, I think that's going to be a key to this game is just always be collecting and shooting as quickly as possible. And if you can go from there, I think you have a good shot of uh, doing pretty well, of advancing into whatever the next stage of competition is. Yep. Ranks, all right, so rank six is team 7083, the Tundra Bots from Raleigh, North Carolina. The first thing that stands out about this bot is it is insanely short, but has a very effective shooter on intake. Everything about this robot is small, compact, and space efficient, making their performance all the more incredible. They do lack a wobble wall mechanism, which hinders their performance, but perhaps they can make up for it in cycles or make a new wobble wall in the future. Definitely a robot that has a lot of room to be optimized. Yeah, uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see how these shorter robots play out, uh, especially if they end up being in-person competitions where shots can be blocked, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a point of optimization for some teams to get a, a good, consistent shot that isn't blocked easily. Yeah, I, I know that was definitely something that um, Wizards took into account. With having such a short robot, yes, you can weave in and be super light, but I, I would be worried about shots, especially since later on in the season I can see events happening in person. Uh, Want to go into our top five, Peter? All right, yeah, so top five uh, and speeding into the top five now with a 9113 Need for Speed from Lake Forest, Illinois. The robot, it, uh, robot outfitted with the wooden plates does in fact zoom with a shooter and intake that allows the robot to quickly intake rings and then quickly shoot them out with their linear design. And this was probably like the first act, like really impressive robot that I think I saw this season, and it still absolutely holds up. Uh, I really like their precise wobble goal mechanism. Uh, that seems to be really effective, as well as the utilization of a go tube on their intake rollers. They're using like flat belts, I believe. Um, and I'm interested to see where they go from here and to see if they can speed up any of their mechanisms. Especially their shooter, like that thing is instant. That just flies out. Everything about this robot definitely fits the name, I think. Yeah. I also love that they're using wood. Wood is like one of my favorite materials to use for FTC. Laser cutting it is super easy, and it's more than strong enough to handle the forces that you're gonna deal with in FTC. Um, so I love to see that more teams are starting to shift over to it. Um, but that shooter is just insane. Um, definitely something to watch out for. And I know they've been super competitive in the past um, in the Illinois region. Oh, I just want right. to see, by the way, some uh, with with the wood panels. If that is laser cut, there's so many opportunities to put some, you know, speed hole designs in that. They're called Need for Speed. Like it should be decked out like a <laughs> like a muscle car or something like that. That'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I know a lot of teams try to laser engrave into the side panels. Um, definitely something that I'd love to see from this team. Um, barely missing our top three is Team 18219, Primitive Data from Piedmont, California. It came as a shock to me that they weren't in the top three since they have such an awesome robot. They built a turret that allows them to shoot from practically anywhere on the field. Uh, this has to be one of the best implementations of a turret that I have ever seen um, in FTC. And it's fast, and it doesn't take much time to end. Uh, they do need a little bit more precision during teleop to control the turret, um, as they had trouble hitting the power shots. But with some tuning, they should be able to get that figured out. Uh, we're actually going to be having them on our next show on January 6th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So make sure to tune in for more information on that. 
Right. What did you I guys think... think of this? Oh my god. Everything about this robot is just amazing. Like I remember seeing this reveal and then watching it again and again. It's just beautiful, is all I can say. Yeah, this robot's really great. Um I think it uh I think something really unique is the fact that they're using the a six wheel drive drivetrain. Uh they're clearly prepped for in-person competitions, potentially to play defense on teams, push some teams around, do some bullying. Um, and I think uh, having the turret, which was really well implemented to compensate for that, is uh, is great. And it's just a really good run uh, and a really good robot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Third place goes to team 8300 Pyro Eagles from Shelby, North Carolina. This was one of the first teams I remember getting excited about this year with their top-tier auto and simple effective robot. This team has been notable in the community for achieving their previous world record match and having a consistent scoring shooter. And all of this in early November. Given more time, I can't wait to see more of what this team is capable of. Yeah, uh, this was, I think, like the first world record match that people kept track of because it was that much better than everybody mm -hmm. else. Um, solid robot, and they're just so good at driving it, right? Like, a lot of this game is going to come down to the driving, and they're able to line up every single time and get those shots in. Um, so I'm glad to see that they're they're definitely in the top three. Um, I want to see how in taking from the opposite side, of, uh, in taking from the same side as their shooter works. Um, I think their transfer mechanism could be tweaked a little bit to make it faster in the future. Um, go ahead with second place, Peter. Okay, uh, and in second place we have team. 12635 Curiosity Robotics. Uh, with what looks like a nearly full custom robot, this team from Palo Alto racked up the uh, maybe current world record score of 321, uh, aided by an elite auto which scored all three power shots. Uh, their fold out intake with assisting top roller, their linear transfer allowed this robot to quickly. Oh no, Peter. All right, yep, uh, so they racked up a score of 321 aided by an elite auto, which was scored by all three power uh, th all three power shots. Their fold-out intake with assisting top roller as well as linear transfer allowed this robot to quickly score. This is a team that I'm sure will stand out as a powerhouse re re powerhouse region from of North Cal, and I look forward to seeing them progress from here. Uh, okay. Yep, so just finish up your script, Peter. Uh, definitely a top team. Anything else you wanted to add that wasn't in your script? Uh, no, uh, I don't think so. Uh, just the little dispute about the world record uh, from earlier. <laughs> yep. Uh, Brooks, anything that you had to say about... Um... Yeah, so I really liked um, this team's strategy. I think you can see it right now, where they stand in front of the... Um, I forget what it's called, the dispensing where the rings come out. And they hit the intake and they just drive forward, go back, shoot, shoot, shoot. It's like a it's like a pendulum motion. I, I just feel that that's a really nice strategy to have. And it I think it shows their consistency. I don't think they ever dip up below like what, 280? So yeah, definitely one of the top tier teams this year. Yeah, they they competed at the Google qualifier and they were the number one ranked team there. And a lot of the North California teams on this list were at the Google qualifier. So it just shows how much they're standing out. All right, now the number one spot, and you may have all guessed it. Coming in at the number one spot, we've got team one 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 four eight, the Barker Greybacks from Hornsby, California, uh, Australia. This has to have been the first time we've seen an international team in the top slot, but they deserve it. They've got a perfect auto that gets all three power shots. It's also able to recollect the rings in the starter stack without getting a penalty. In Telia, they're quick to shoot as they use the wall to line up their robot. They just ram the side of their robot into the field perimeter and they're ready to shoot. Their wobble goal mechanism is fast and consistent and they won the Australia National Championships and it's for a good reason. Uh, if you watch the robot, like their execution is flawless. Um, I'm really hoping that we do have a Worlds and we get to see them there because this is a very exciting robot. Okay, what do you guys uh, think of them? I think that I like, appreciate the way that they're using the uh, the fact that their shooter does not shoot straight. They're a a like actively accounting for the spin 
and having a set point where they shoot from. And I think that's a really effective way of um, driving a robot because you always know where you're going to be best shooting from. Um, and I think that is something that other teams could consider. Uh, yeah, I thought that was really clever. And again, this is just one of those robots that screams excellence to me. Everything on this robot is perfect. Everything seems well thought out. Their wobble goal is the entire back. Their intake is the entire front. Everything is just super well put together. Hey guys, the so one just a question I have. So is has Barker been a team that's been high up there in FTC? Because they, I mean, they've been a very well known FRC team for a long time. A favorite of one of our other hosts, Justin, in FRC. Uh, has their FTC program been this strong? I don't know. I don't think it's been this strong. In the past, there's been one team, I think the Bearded Pineapples from Australia, that's been like the top Australian team, but they haven't really been competitive at the world stage. So it's very exciting to see Barker bring out these awesome teams uh, that are very competitive in the world stage. Um, I remember in Velocity Vortex in Houston, there was a, a Barker team that made it there, uh, but they had like disconnect issues the whole time, and they went 0-9. Uh, so uh, clearly something has changed or they uh, have started putting a bit more energy into it because, yeah, the robots this season have seemed to be really uniformly all just really great. One thing I'm interested to see on them is right now it looks like they line up with the right wall and they're able to hit the tower, right? What happens when they switch alliances? Right, yes. because their thing shifts over to the left. I don't know if you know anything about this. So uh, I saw something about that. Basically, they said that they, they switch the whole shooter around. Wow. They can flip what side the wheel is on, um, the wheel and the wall is on. And that's how that, they come that's to crazy. that. That's crazy. I, I hope I get to see more of the engineering behind that because being able to switch an entire shooter mechanism is pretty insane. All right, Peter, you want to end this off? Yeah, so uh, that's going to wrap up FTC Top 25 for the month of December. What teams do you think you deserve that uh, deserve to be in the Top 25 that weren't? Let us know in the chat. And make sure to vote in January when we do have Top 25 again. Thank you for all the follows and subscriptions we received today. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free if you, if you or your parents have Amazon Prime. We hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Recap. If you want to stay connected with first updates now FTC is doing, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at FunFTC, and join our Discord through the link in the chat. On behalf of myself, Brooks, Peter, and our producer Tyler working behind the scenes, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Bye! Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.